Hey guys. Today is what we've all been waiting for. Let's not do that. But it's time for Book Tubathon 2018. And I am so super duper excited about this because I have done like literally no reading. I have read two books in like the last like two, three months. Wait, is it July? July's half over. Two and a half months. Okay. Two and a half months. I have done like, I've read two books. There's a lot been going on. So I've really, really needed a readathon that can just kick me into reading. And yes, there's a lot of reading readathons that I could have taken part in, but you know, they're, they're more like 24 hour readathons or you read this set of books or you do a bingo card or something. And I've actually started my own reading bingo, but it's like those don't really motivate you like the book Tubathon does. The book Tubathon is just, it motivates you so much to just read and read and read and just get immersed into the community. It's just, it's a great readathon. I absolutely love it. And I love Ariel Bassett for creating this readathon. She's done such a fantastic job with it. But speaking of that, I will leave a link to the YouTube channel for Booktubeathon in the description box below so that you can learn everything that you need to. I would try to explain it myself, but I'm sure I would just confuse all of you. So let's get on to the reading challenges, which I have written down in my handy dandy notebook. Challenge number one is to let a coin toss decide your first read. I am woefully unprepared because I have no coin. One second. I haven't flipped a coin in years, so we'll see how this goes. Oh probably help if you guys knew what books I was going to be flipping for. Okay, so the first one is The Possibility of Somewhere by Julia Day. I recently bought this book from the book outlet, I think, or yeah, it had to be the book outlet because there's no half price books that on it. And also there's Doomed, which I did get at half price books by Tracy Debs. This book I know is a contemporary because it deals with teenagers in high school and just, you know, the regular high school stuff. And I'm not going to go too into it because other than the fact that the one boy is mad at this girl that comes from the wrong side of the tracks for being the best potential candidate for, you know, class valedictorian, I don't really know much about it. Now, Doomed, the only thing I know about this book is the female protagonist gets this weird email from her father that has these pictures of her from when she was a kid. And this email sets out a virus that pretty much turns off everything that runs on electricity, everything. And the only way to fix this problem is to go into this game that her father created and beat it. So her and her neighbors end up trying to play the game and beat it. And that's pretty much all I know. I'm not sure if there's supposed to be a fantastical aspect to the story or not. I'm hoping there is, but I love gamer stories, so I really can't wait to get into this. So we're flipping for these two. Got my coin. Heads is going to be, I guess, the possibility of somewhere because there's people on the cover. And Dune will be tails. It's been a while since I flipped one of these, so where'd it go? Okay, it's on the floor, but landed on heads. So the possibility of somewhere is what we're reading first which is kind of good considering the seventh challenge is always to read seven books. This is a fairly short book and it's a contemporary, so it should be quick to get through. Now, the second challenge is to read a book about something you want to do. Now, I've seen a few other TBRs and people take this in one of two ways. They either take it in the way that I want to reread this book. That's what I want to do, so this completes that challenge. Or, they take it as an aspect in the book or an activity in the book that they want to do, like snorkeling or skydiving. Me, I want to live inside a book. I could have actually chose Harry Potter for this because I would love to go to a wizarding school or the Percy Jackson series because I would absolutely love to go to Camp Half-Blood without the whole dying possibility thing. But this is something that I feel would be like the best of all of that because technically since you know Percy Jackson and Harry Potter are books I could jump into that story and besides that who wouldn't want to be able to live inside of multiple books I'm pretty sure by the time I get done reading this I will be one of those people and I will no longer want to book jump but at the moment that is what I want to do number three 
is to read and watch a movie adaptation. Now, I could just go ahead and reread and rewatch The Death Cure, but I am not ready for that heartbreak again yet. If the movie had changed the ending of a certain character death, then I would be all on board with doing it. But I am tearing up just thinking about that character death, so that's not going to happen. I chose Harry Potter. My reasoning or my excuse to reread Harry Potter again is the fact that I haven't really read the illustrated editions yet except for the first one. So I have books two and three of the illustrated editions. I haven't even looked at the pictures. So for this book to be done, I'm going to be reading the illustrated edition of The Chamber of Secrets and I'm actually going to be watching all seven, all eight movies on loop while I'm reading the book. This book will take me about a day to read, mainly because I'll be looking at all the beautiful artwork. But seriously, I'm going to watch all eight movies on the loop the entire time I'm reading this book. So I'm really watching the adaptation. Okay, let's see. The next reading challenge is to read a book with green on the cover. And I did have a big book picked out for this, mainly because all the books with green on the cover that aren't big I've already read. So... For this, I'm going to be reading Prince of Tennis, Volume 2. I don't know if it's really can show up on my camera very well, but there is green at the bottom here. And the spine is green too. There's a little bit of green mixed in with the yellow and blue here. But there, there is green on the cover. And it's just I needed something light to read in between all of these books. I only hope that when I read this book, I don't feel the urge to rewatch the entire series because that is a long ass series. And even though I would love to rewatch it, again, I don't have the time. Number five, read a book while wearing the same hat the whole time. Now, I forgot to get my hat. I'm so unprepared. Okay, I have my hat, which if you can't read it, it's supposed to be love across it. And I will be reading the love interest while wearing this hat. And I have a bookmark in this because I was actually, actually, I've been planning on reading this book for like a week now and I haven't cracked it open yet. I put the bookmark in it and that's it. I had intentions of already reading this book. This was just the perfect opportunity to do it or force myself to do it, whichever way you want to think that because it's been on my TBR for like a year now. Number six, read a book with a beautiful spine. Now, I originally was going to read The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon, mainly because, I mean, yes, the spine is pretty, but mainly because after Everything, Everything, this is the only book of hers I own, and I wanted to read it and just go ahead and get it out of the way. Whether I like it or hate it, I don't know. I just wanted to go, to he go ahead and, you know, read it. That way, if I don't like it, I can just go ahead and get rid of it. Make room on the shelf. But I'm undecided now whether I want to read this book or The Flame in the Mist, because the second book of the series comes out relatively soon, and I do want to read it, love Mulan retellings, and this is a beautiful book with a beautiful spine. Uh, it's very simplistic, it just has flowers and then Flame in the Mist, but I absolutely love this text, and or I absolutely love this font, and then I love the flowers that just are up here. It's a very simplistic spine, but I love books that are they're designed and they're very beautiful but simplistic. This is a bunch of scribbles, so I guess you could say it's simplistic. But I'm not sure which of these books I'm going to be reading yet. I guess it depends on time-wise. This book will take me a lot longer to read than The Sun is Also a Star. I can probably finish this book in about a day. That was, yeah, that was the last reading challenge except for challenge seven, which is to read seven books. Now, how many is here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I do need to read one more. So I'm going to go in between these last two books that I had set to the side just in case I need an extra book to fill. The first one is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, but I have the audiobook for this book and I've heard it's fantastic. So I'm kind of leaning more towards this one than State of Sorrow by Melinda Salisbury. Who wrote this? Mackenzie Lee wrote this. I'm, I'm all over the place today, but it's between one of these two books. Both I want to read. I just want to read The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue a little bit more. While State of Sorrow actually goes to completing one of my um, reading challenges on my reading bingo card. 
So I don't know, I may leave this up to either my mood, and if my mood is for both of them, then I will leave that up to a coin flip as well. We will see what happens when it happens. These will be like the books I read at the very end of the readathon anyways. So, I mean, if that's the way it is, I may just end up reading this one because I have the audiobook for it and I can exercise, take a bath and everything and just be reading. But these are all the books that I plan to try to read. Am I actually going to get through this big pile of books? No, absolutely not. But there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, four, five. There are at least five books on this little stack here that I think I could read like given a day a piece or actually the sun is also a star and the possibility is somewhere I may be able to read both those in one day or well the manga I can read like within a couple of hours if I'm not interrupted. So that and another book if I could finish the other book in that day that'll work. So the possibility of me reading seven books yes is very very slim but there is a possibility of me doing it. But those are all of the challenges, all the books I plan on reading. You guys should let me know in the comments below of what you're going to read here in the Booktubeathon. If you're not participating in the Booktubeathon, just share whatever you're reading. And honestly, if you're reading a single page from a book, you are participating in Booktubeathon. It doesn't matter how much you read, it just matters that you're reading. But that is the end of this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.